Hi everyone, my name is Paul with Mobile Corporation. What I'm going to do today is just to quickly go through the cable configuration and setup of the MOBA PAVIR scanner system. We'll start out with the components. Here we've got the infrared scanner head, then we've got the MOBA operand computer, we've got the GNSS antenna, then we've got the distance encoder, otherwise known as the odometer. And then the cables that go with these, first here, if you can't see uh, the numbers on the tags, I'll read them off. We've got the computer to distance encoder, which connects to the second port from the bottom on the computer to the distance encoder. That part number is 04-02-50091. Then the next cable is the encoder to scanner, and that part number is 04-02-50155. And a little note, when you make this connection, it's got a very positive feedback that you've established a good connection. A second note on this distance encoder, these two connections, one is male and one is female, so they are foolproof. The third cable here is the GPS antenna cable, and that part number is 04-02-50126. That is connected to the third port from the bottom to the GPS antenna here. So once all of those cables are connected, we would take the power cable, which is part number 04-02-50123. Connect that, the system will power up, and you should notice a flashing green LED. If that by any chance is red, that is an error code. The other thing you'll notice is LEDs on the GPS antenna. Uh, when you are outside and actually have line of sight to satellites, it'll start off with a flashing red, then yellow, then green. Once it's made contact, it will be a solid green. We're going to cover button functions, icons, some quick tests, project entry and project start. I will start with the icons in the top right portion of your screen. Here we've got the satellite dish symbol, which is your GPS reception. Currently, I've got an X through it since my antenna is inside the office. Uh, once you've established a GPS connection, uh, you would have a green dot directly uh, to the bottom left of that satellite dish symbol. The next icon is for the odometer, and that is a quick test. You can press the odometer symbol, select start test, and you can slowly turn your odometer, and it'll read out a building distance and your current speed. And that's just to ensure that everything is connected properly and functioning. We can stop that, return to the home screen. Then the next symbol is for the scanner head, and that is also a quick test. Select the scanner, start test, and you can probably hear my scanner running in the background. This is a quick test to check temperature of the sensor uh, and compare it to a calibrated handheld spot radiometer if you'd like. You can see we have five sensor readings. Sensor number three is at zero centimeters or straight down and you can compare your readout here which is displayed in Celsius next to your calibrated radiometer. Then we stop the test, go back to the home screen, and the next icon is the radio tower with gray to green bars. The more green you have, the better your cellular reception for data transmission. 
The information button here on the home screen is just basic information about the system configuration. Back to the home screen. The buttons to the left uh, and I wanted to clarify that this system is a combination touchscreen and tactile buttons. So these touchscreen buttons here are connected to these dome buttons to the left. So the F1 or paper with asterisk, that is to start a new project. The F2 or paper with wrench is a edit function. Once you've created a project, saved it, but realize you need to make a change, you can use that button to make those necessary changes. The recycle bin or F3 is to delete a project and the internal folder or F4 button is if you delete a project such as I'm going to do now and you realize you did not want to delete it you can go to the internal folder button find that project press upload to memory stick go back to the home position and there is that project. Now we'll cover a uh, project entry. So I've highlighted my top project, which is the last one that I've completed, and I will select the F1 button. The first entry is the operator name. I will delete what's in there. Enter my name. Roadway ID, I will delete what's in there. Now the roadway ID can be as simple as Highway 61 northbound, uh, but each state might be slightly different. So you'll want to consult your state agency uh, or your county agency to see how they want this roadway entered in. Uh, for this example, I am going to use uh, the Minnesota DOT naming convention uh, when I enter in a roadway here. So I will start off by entering TH for trunk highway, 6, 8, then dash HMA for hot mix asphalt, dash L1 for lift one, dash 12 L for 12 left, dash C L for center line. Then I will scroll down to start location and you can see I'm using these buttons here versus the scroll button on the side. Uh, you can use the scroll button on the side, but I find it easier to use the up and down arrows. So the start location, this is purely informational unless your state recommends it be used for something else. Uh, what we can do here is just enter something like our start location is the bridge. Next, comment. You can put uh, any comment you'd like in there, uh, something that is meaningful to you as the contractor. Again, unless your local agency wants you to use that for something special. I will leave that at test. Uh, here we have lift, which you can select which lift it is. I'll say lift two for this one. Scroll down to the next layer thickness. I will enter in two inches. Max paving width. I will just leave that at 12 feet. And that is the width you want the scanner to actually scan. Scan length, 
that is the height of the scanner, including the angle, uh, from the sensor head to the point it hits the mat. We'll leave that at 13 feet. Min temp display. I generally set this for 200 to start. The max temp display. I generally set at 350. And these can be changed uh, when you're paving. And these do not determine whether or not a temperature is readable by the unit. It only assigns a color. So anything under 200 degrees would come across the thermal image in gray. And anything above 350 degrees would come across the thermal image in white. We'll scroll down even further. Rolling radius. This is the radius of the wheel that the odometer is attached to. Uh, and generally, this would be set up uh, by a MOBA technician or a trained person once a system is installed on a machine. And if necessary, you can do a calibration using the calculation wizard where you see here it says input the distance you'll drive and you can do that by selecting the box removing what is in there and say you wanted to calibrate using 150 feet you would enter 150 then it says go to the next step which is the check mark and it says please drive 150 feet press f5 to abort or press f8 for the check mark when you're finished and if we were to be running an actual calibration routine we would drive the 150 feet press the f8 and it would take us back to the home screen and I'm going to hit the X since we really don't want to do that and it would display the new rolling radius in that entry. Here we have odometer rotation left or right and that is just which side of the machine in the direction of paving that the odometer is mounted <clears throat> and we have start station and offset so start station is the first hole station that is in front of the paver. I will say station 100 as an example. And that station 100 is 50 feet in front of the scanner. So I would put an offset of 50 feet. Uh, if we were, uh, whether, whether station 100 or station 99 or station 101 is in front of you, the thing to remember is whether you're ascending or descending, you enter the whole station in front of you and the amount of feet it's going to take to get to that whole station. And that will be a positive offset. Then after entering in the station and offset, your station sequence, ascending or descending. We'll set it at descending. Then we have our GPS offset in X and Y. And this should be set up one time and should not change. What this is, and we can use the question mark button for any of these entries, and this will explain to us the GPS offset X is the distance between the IR beam and the GPS receiver in the direction of paving. The distance is positive if the GPS receiver is in front of the IR sensor in direction of paving, otherwise it is negative. Generally, the GPS antenna is going to be somewhere around six or seven feet in front of the spot it is monitoring on the mat. So I would put a positive, not six inches, 
So I want to do 72 inches. And the GPS offset Y, the distance between the center IR spot on the mat and the GPS antenna projected in the line of IR spots. The distance is positive if the GPS receiver is right from center and negative if it is left. So I might put in four inches offset in the X and Y. And that is it for the project entries. Once we've got everything entered as we like it, we can select the check mark button or F8. And now you see that we have a project created with a roadway symbol and here's our roadway ID. Again, if there's something I wanted to change on there, I would select the F2 or edit button. I can go into that project and say I was wrong we're actually on lift one I can change that do the check and that change has been made then to start the actual project we've got it highlighted it's the roadway symbol we press the F8 this section is asking you exactly where the mat is below this scanner. So the scanner is represented here straight down. We entered in 12 feet for the maximum paving width. The computer rather than reading exactly out to 12 feet and overlapping the edge of the mat has brought the reading down to 11.81 feet. And then we will elect where the scanner is in the mat by selecting the plus to the left or the right. So if you have seven feet on this side of the scanner and five feet on this side, that is how we would set it. After entry of your dimensions, you would select check. It's going to gather hardware components and in most cases, there would be nothing listed here, but because I do not have GPS reception, it's telling me that the device is missing. So normally you would not have a missing device. You would hit the check and the project will start. And that is it for the button functions, icons, quick test and project entry. Thanks.